yeah, welcome into the ACC's Mad Monday podcast uh, for a Wednesday this week. Long live the King. My name's Manoa Stewart. I'm joined in uh, the studio by Joel Harrison, the notorious pants man. G'day, Joel. How are you? Good to be here. Really coming off the bench uh, for this episode. You've got me in there, but the uh, thanks for man. having me. We've activated the 18th man. Head knocks to uh, Chris Key, Di Henwood. Um, and also Ben Hurley as well, who joined me on Saturday to commentate the Warriors' humping of the Dolphins. Joel, just before we get into it, you and I have um, we started to bring NRL into our real lives. Yeah. So we watched Ricky Stewart a couple of weeks ago uh, talking about benching Jared Croker, and he was questioned by the media, hey, do you think it was the right move to bench Jared Croker? And he said, yeah, it was, and anyone who thinks different is a fucking idiot. And so now, Joel, you and I have just brought that into our day-to-day working lives. Yep. And I feel like it's brought me a whole lot of confidence. <laughs> it's really um, it's really done nothing but bad for everyone else in the office, though. But like, I went to uh, Joe Jury. Yes. The webmaster. He's like, oh, I don't know if I actually like these, uh, these hokey-pokey pineapple lumps. What did you say? I like them, and anyone who disagrees with me is a fucking idiot. <laughs> And I th- it just empowers you. I think um, if you take one thing away from this podcast, let it be that. Take that into your day, your working day, and um, just let it empower the rest of your afternoon. Look, it's going to come at great cost potentially to your own job. Like, yeah, I don't know the ramifications of telling everyone to get fucked in the workplace, but I guess we're going to find out. Um, similarly, telling everyone to get fucked in the first five minutes of a podcast. But here we go. Um, all right. So today's podcast, we're going to start with the Warriors thumping the Dolphins thirty to eight. Oh, Sean oh. Johnson now on the last. Yeah. That's right, that freshly shaved Sean Johnson just goes straight through the middle, which is what he does best. He was like a lubed up seal, slipping into the water. 15 metres away, they go right again. Here comes Sean Johnson, stepping, jerking, he scored in the first half, he'll score again in the second. Daylight savings, wide back the clock, Sean Johnson is going to put four more on the board. Just leave it all to the Sean Johnson slipping and sliding ducking and weaving God you just love to see it, I feel like I've hopped in a time machine and gone back to 2012 Hasn't been it, here's the MILF, stalking the sidelines as MILFs often do Now here's Bailey Sarah in the offload but that's a new corner finds hands, it's going back to Metcalf, Metcalf's got wheels, Metcalf's got speed, Metcalf's got another try, Warriors 16 <coughs> How do you feel, Anthony Milford? How do you feel? Two tries while you're off the field. Should have been three, probably should have been four. Both sides to work with here, the Warriors. Chance ringing out across Go Media Stadium at Mount Smart. Need points here. Big time. Sean Johnson goes out the back. Chance, I've got the overlap. He gives it to DWZ. An athletic finish, and it's Rick James, bitch. I think it's a long way. Try time. <laughs> Wade Egan's scoot is the prediction. No, no they go to the right. right. Still through the hands. Charles Nickel clocks there. Dana Martinez and Lesniak. And this time they Surely can't call it back. Time. Try time. Rick James. He's ducks super down again. Yeah, super freak. Super freak. If we were in the other studio, we'd be able to play that. He is super freaky. Wrapped up there in a tackle. Surely that was complete, but no. Oh, it's an oh. intercept. Rick James. He's got no one in front of him. The tongue's out, he's going to score again, he's applied for three, he's going to be granted two, and it's another try to Dallas. What's in it? Celestia! Now, Joel, this one, for me, could have been a little bit higher. We had a couple of tries denied by the bunker. There was a, a real, a real tough one for Murata Nukore, who was done for obstructing, like, the third or fourth defender away from the ball. Did you see this one? Yes, yes, that was uh, Katoa, who was on yeah. the other end of that. And it's all, it was like, there's no way he was going to get DWZ. Yeah. But he kind of, like, fell into it. I, w- I was like, because Nukore just runs these stupidly hard lines. Yeah. like, And he couldn't even, he tried to get out of the way. Katoa just dived into him, which was smart from Katoa. But yeah. Yeah. There was a couple of things in this game that I thought could have gone sort of either way. If this game had have gone the way of the Dolphins, then I think that that would have been one of those calls where you're just like, that was a bit of a crock of shit, particularly because he hit the 
out, sorry, the inside shoulder, which is what you're supposed to do. Like yeah. If you're going to hit one of the shoulders, it should have been that one. Murata himself had a bit of a sketchy game. Bit of a sketchy first half. I think he had a couple of knock-ons and because, like you said, he was screaming into these holes from the get-go. He was running so hard onto them um, and they just wouldn't stick. But then eventually they did. And I think the not only did the, the seesaw tip the other way from him knocking everything on, it went so far to the point where Dallin Wittenys Lesniak towards the end got one of the most ridiculous intercept tries that I've ever seen. How he plucked that one out of thin air, I have no idea. He's playing incredibly. Like yeah. I, I've been on a few. I'm on a few different Warriors till I die fan pages and stuff on Facebook. And there's just so many critical people in the first half. He he let that try in, which to be fair, he jumped as high as he can and almost tipped it out as yeah. well. Like. It was a very, very unfortunate try. People on Facebook were like, fuck, DW's at his shirt, get him out. Then he goes and scores two tries, runs about 200 metres as well. Like He is an absolute maniac yeah. when he runs the ball. So you're checking these um, fan pages mid-game, are you? Uh, I actually went on afterwards, yeah. and there was a lot of people like, Johnson shit, Metcalf shit, Newcore, fucking DWZ. Yeah. It's just the, a very negative space. And yeah. then after the game, people, uh, yeah. Another one that I saw, which was really weird, a lot of old oldies, they're like, why are we saying the Waz? That's the Waratahs. Like, I'm, Waratah. I'm, I'm warriors till I die. Can we change? Can we stop this Waz culture? And it's like, mate, up the Waz. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I've seen a, pe- a few people saying this. I saw Willie Mason, um, uh, you know, a well-known podcaster in his own right. Yeah. Uh, he was talking about this on his podcast the other day, that it was never the Waz. But I don't know. If pe- that's what people are calling them, then I don't know. Just get on board with it. We were actually doing a bit of work last week uh, with the official Warriors people, and yep. we had something oh, for the hits. We had something saying, like, go the Warriors, and then they're like, can you please change this to up the wires? Wow. So even the club's getting behind so it. So the fans, the thing. they better get behind it as yeah, well. 100%. Um, Sean Johnson, he's turned back the clock. Everybody's talking about it this week. It was a vintage performance for him. The first half he started out, he was taking it to the line. He got tackled on the fifth uh, once, maybe twice. And then once he started scoring tries, we all saw exactly what it was. The, the week before, he hadn't really brought his running game in, which Webby always talks about after the games. He's like, we need Sean Johnson to run it. That first try that he scored, it sort of came out of nothing. Yeah. But what it was was Adam Fanua Blake has scored about four tries in four consecutive games going straight up the guts off that exact play. And I think Sean Johnson knew that the Dolphins would have been training for that all week. He's then thrown the dummy, gone at himself, Four people flocked to Adam Fanua Blake, and he flies through for the first of his two tries. This was a vintage performance from SJ, wasn't it? Yeah, and I, I saw another respected podcast, uh, uh, Den and Kemp, bloke in a bar. He put a post out. He was saying, like, this is this is not even the vintage SJ. This is a new SJ yeah. that no one's seen before. He's playing better than he's ever played. He's kicking. He's running with confidence. And hopefully he can uh, he can do this for the next 11 weeks. Yeah, he's been really taking it to the line, which I think has been excellent. This is where, you know... Pre-season, there were all those photos that came out of him and he was looking shredded out of his mind. Yeah. And I was so excited, um, you know, just to see that photo. But then to see what he can do out on the field, it's been it's been excellent. And I, I don't know, the, you know, the Tigers threw a what, reportedly multi-million dollar deal at him to, to bugger off over to the West Tigers. But I feel like he's so much a part of the Warriors and what he's doing at the moment is, is just giving people another reason. I Like, if he didn't come back and just tear it up, I don't know if Roger Tuivasa-Shek's looking at coming back, you know? Yeah, well, it's like you can tell those two players, they actually want to be at the Warriors. They yeah. want to win with the Warriors. Like, you can just see how special it would be if they're winning at the Warriors, opposed yeah. to Sean Johnson maybe finishing 10th place, getting a good bag at the yeah, Tigers. Yeah. But it's like, at what, at what point of your career... Yeah, you can chase money after the NRL, I reckon. Yeah, and I said this on another podcast last week when uh, he was saying, look, I don't want to go and you know chase titles. That's why I said no to this contract. I was like, no one's going to accuse you of chasing titles but going to the <laughs> West Tigers. I don't think that's going to be um, uh, on the market. Hey, one of the big things for me this week was a massive turnaround in the amount of pitch invaders. I yeah. don't think we saw one. I know, it was great. It was just like, finally. Yeah. Finally, people are showing a bit of respect that, that it deserves. Yeah, because I think um, what we did was we collectively as a fan base we're just like nah that sucked like yeah. you can't run on there ruin the game you know the the pitch invaders are shit you, you're not streakers you're not getting your kid off and I think we've um we've single handedly fixed it to make it uncool is how you stop people from doing pitch invasions I reckon we should apply the same thing to ram raids yes if the, if the community just got behind it was just like ah ram raids aren't that cool anymore <laughs> I reckon everyone would knock it on the head I feel like ram raiding and pitch invading with your clothes on it kind of goes hand in hand it it's, like, it's probably the same people doing it as well so hopefully 
yeah, just yeah, just gaslight them into thinking it's uh, it's not cool. A hundred percent. All right. So an absolute thumbing. The Warriors thirty, Dolphins eight. Those eight points consisted of two unconverted tries. They had a couple of players out. Um, the prop whose name escapes me, uh, who's now out for the season, I believe. Uh, uh, Gilbert. Gilbert, yeah. yeah great uh, player. Uh, they have Felice Calfusi, who's out for, his, seems to be his fifth suspension so far this year. So they've got a few dudes out, but the Dolphins didn't really fire a shot, did they? Yeah, no hammer as well, which is, no is hammer. pretty big. Uh, also, there's a couple other people. Jeremy Marshall King wasn't playing yes, as he, well. Late scratching. Yeah, and then oh, there's someone in the half as well. But it's, oh, uh, Sean Sullivan wasn't, Sean Sullivan wasn't playing as well. But it's kind of one of those ones where it's like, I feel like the Dolphins are still doing well. Yeah. I was listening to yeah, a couple of Aussie podcasts. They're like, the Warriors, they're red hot, but the Dolphins had so many people out. But it's like, I think even with a full strength team at a blackout Mount Smart Stadium, the yeah. Dolphins wouldn't have won. They still could finish in the top eight, and I reckon the Warriors are going to be going head to head against them to get one of those seven, eighth positions. But yeah. yeah. No, it was an absolutely uh, excellent performance, an absolute hiding as well. Um, moving ahead to this week, Saturday eight, sorry, Friday eight pm in Canberra, we're playing the Raiders over there. Uh, rookie Ali Leatawa makes his debut against Jared Croker. Now we were talking to a dear friend, work colleague of ours, uh, who has the inside scoop on the Warriors camp. Inside. Um, apparently, this bloke has been training the house down. Apparently, he's an absolute gun, and he's leapfrogged a couple of people. Viliami Vailea, uh, I know he's under under an injury cloud. Yeah. He can't get back in. Um, Braden Viliami, very yep. confusing that they have the same first and last name. Uh, he can't get back out there. Obviously, Rocco Berry got obliterated on the weekend, so he'll be out for at least a week. Um, so, Leotawa, it seems to be our 16th centre that we're trying this year. I reckon it's kind of a similar situation to what was happening with you and Aitken last year as well. Me and Aitken? Yeah. <laughs> with you and Aitken, yeah. he's kind of similar guys. He also did yeah. a massively illegal hip drop in DWZ that didn't get cited. Yep. But Neo Koro, like he 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 seems like he can play in the centres. Yes, well he played in the centres for the Kiwis. Yeah, and he's fast. You yep. see that he runs incredible lines. He he's obviously enormous. defends. Yeah, and it's like why why don't you just get him in one of the centres and then put Josh Curran, who should be like he's pretty good to be on the bench as well. Yeah, well, I agree with you, but I would go one step further, and I would say Mitch Barnett, who yes. back, welcome back to the Warriors in that wow. sixteen jersey. Every time there was a half break, Mitch Barnett was the first person there. It's like he's playing fullback. I think it was something like one hundred and fifty meters in fifty minutes of game time. Yeah. Didn't miss a tackle, and the support play was awesome. Yeah, him and Wade Egan definitely were a great addition yeah. back to the team. But oh, the ruthless Parker boys. I know. Yeah, back to. Uh, I think it's good though. One thing that Webster is giving people who are performing well in New South Wales Cup a uh, a chance. Yeah. So hopefully he can deliver. I believe he's probably going to be marking. Uh, the 300 game man Jared Croker yeah we talked about this out in the office just before like Jared Croker uh, immense mana a lot of respect but I don't think he really strikes fear into the hearts of opponents yeah he, it was early on the season battling for a position in the team yeah. and even last season as well like kind of not really the Jared Croker that everyone used to know and love. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, horrendous injury history. Yes. Um, and probably closer to the end of his career than he is to the start of it. Um, <laughs> God bless him. Well, no it would be incredible if he played 600 games, well, to be fair. who knows? Um, and, but, you know, the thing is, at least there's a there's more upside than there is downside, if you know what I mean, to playing someone like Ali Leotawa, who, if his name sounds familiar to him, that is his uncle, Ali Lawatiti. Yeah. Is his uncle. He's been obviously named after him. Um, and I know uh, Joe Allen Bede's actually your uncle as yes. well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Similar similar situation there. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple, couple different letters in the last name wrong. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be getting his debut. And, and like you say, Webby just wants to try these guys. And I think if you had to pick a position at the Warriors that was probably our weakest, mm. it would be... B centre at the moment, I would say. Everywhere else seems pretty locked in. Our cent- uh, our forward pack's tremendous. Um, our halves when Tomati's back. Although Luke Metcalf's making that a bit of a problem now, isn't he, as well? He's an interesting one because for some reason, I just heard a lot of hype around him. I saw a couple of videos of him just sh- like incredibly hitting the line, going through these gaps last mm. year. He played great in the trial, also played great for yeah. the New South Cup. And like, he hasn't done anything wrong, really. A couple mistakes in his first game. Yeah. But in his last, he got some really good support runs in that last game. But yeah. I feel like Timari Martin will definitely jump straight back into the team. Yeah, for sure. But Metcalf is, is good to have there in that 14 role, maybe. Yeah, well, I don't even think, like, we haven't lost a whole lot uh, in terms of halves cover for Timari being out. Like, yeah. 
We've, we've still been playing just as well. You couldn't pin any of those losses on the fact that we didn't have Tamari or the fact that Luke Metcalf was out there. And Wheels as well. I mean, he, he got away for a massive uh, breakaway that eventually got called back because Marcelo got a late hit. Oh. That's, that's the one that the MILF put on him. Fuming. And I then was fuming. The MILF got sent to the bin for 10 minutes. Um, which, you know, we scored twice during that 10 minutes, so yeah. just piled on the obliteration. He'll be gone for about two or three weeks, I would say. Yeah, I think him and uh, yeah, Wallace are both out for three weeks, I saw. Yeah, right. For Wallace, it was unlucky because it was a hit on head, and he's just got a huge head, but he did leave with his shoulder. It was a shoulder charge, yeah. And yeah. Tohu Harris has been, actually, so we had on our feed on the um, ACC's coverage of it, we had the referees mic up quite loud, and you could hear Sean Johnson and Tohu Harris when they were pleading with the refs. Mm. So there was that one where the ref said, oh, it was incidental contact with the head. So it was Rocco Berry's head smashing into Jared Wallace's head. And Tohu Harris raised such a good point. He's like, yeah, but the only reason his head is flinging forward like that is because he got shoulder charged. Yeah. So that should definitely be a factor. And I think it will be in the, um, what has been in the in the uh, penalties. Sean Johnson, I'll, he always pleads with the rest. Think about it. Think about it from a footy perspective. <laughs> yeah. Blah, blah, blah. He's excellent. I'm a big fan of that. Um, just finally on this game against the Raiders this weekend, which I think is very winnable. Um, it is the 50th Warriors game for uh, Adam Fanua Blake and Marcelo Montoya. I can't believe that they've both had 50 already. Yeah. This is Josh Curran's 50th NRL game um, all up. He's only ever suited up 50 times in the NRL. I feel like that's a very steep sort of... Uh, progression, career progression for Josh Curran. He was an origin um, talk last year. Yeah, yeah, he definitely, well, he came from the Roosters. I'm not sure if he got, he might have got one or two caps for the Roosters. He was really young. Yeah. And, but yeah, like he, he's been playing awesome. He has been. All right, that'll do it for the Warriors talk. And now it's time to go to our stonker of the round. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Uh, the Raiders played the Tigers and eventually eked out a win 20 to 19. It is game on. Ten minutes remaining. Two tries the difference. Tigers on the front foot. Appy! Tackle by Puckley. Ian Whiten. Bateman. John Bateman! Back to back the Tigers. Bateman gets a try against his old club. And Bateman said, give it to me, boy. Over alongside the post. We're going to be 18-12. They're on the springboard. Paul Gallen. Bacon. Leaves it through, gets there, regathers, scores! <laughs> Six more coming into tackle one. Brendan Wake, we're going to be locked up in a moment. Well, what about that one? Rugby league is a funny, funny game. Brooks with a field goal attempt. He's got, He's got it. it. He's got it. What a kick. <laughs> Luke Brooks, the Tigers are in front. This is insane. Fogarty. Oh, he's missed it. Oh, he's missed. Although... It's, it's going to be a penalty up here. Dangerous contact on the legs. Jamal Fogarty. Yep. Puts the Raiders back in front. Talao. Back to Buller. Now Brooks. They're in the centre of the ground. They've got numbers here. Pollet. <laughs> now it's with Buller. They're going to run They're out of time. Out of time. Oh. Brooks. <laughs> and it goes dead. The Raiders will win. Full time. That is officially the craziest, craziest game of football I have ever seen. Tigers made a massive comeback in the last 20, uh, sorry, 10 minutes to level it all 18 um, a piece going into the last couple of minutes of the game. They then hit a field goal for the lead, the Tigers that is. Fogarty had a two-point attempt to try and, uh, sorry, a, a one-point field goal attempt to try and draw it, send it to Golden Point. He was tackled late, uh, it was an Isaiah Papali'i diving at his legs. Um, he was fouled on the jump shot. He got two free throws. He made them both. And eventually the Raiders won. This one, Joel, I feel like, yeah, it's a stonker because of the end. But the first 70 minutes of that game kind of sucked. It's vintage Raiders and it's vintage Tigers. Like Raiders getting a lead and then almost blowing it. And also Tigers just having no chance. And then with 10 minutes to go, looking like they're the best team in the comp. Yeah. It's it's, it's crazy. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Jareem Buller, uh, your your dear friend, Jareem Abdul Buller. <laughs> um, that one always twists my brain into a pretzel. He looked excellent. Every time he touched the ball, he was just like slicing through, scored yep. a try, set a couple up. Um, he was instrumental in that in that comeback. And I think we're going to get to the um, Supercoach podcast tomorrow. But uh, I don't know if there's still time to get him or not. Yeah. 
He's he's pretty much. Oh, we'll talk about that in the super coach. Yeah. But he has he's done my team wonders. Yeah, a hundred percent. And the thing is, you got him in to make all this money, but I just don't think you can justify getting rid of him. So mm. yeah, as, as you mentioned, we'll get back to that um, in tomorrow's podcast, the super coach one. But yeah, Raiders versus Tigers. It was a stonker. There were a lot of other blowouts. A couple of forty point games. The the Cowboys put forty six points on the board. The Rabbitohs put forty six on the board as well. Forty five, forty six. Um, so I, I, that one to me was really the only one that had any stonk about it. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's hilarious. You watch like Brandon Wakeham, he's he's shushing the crowd when they equalize it and then um Luke Brooks hits the most incredible left foot droppy from, yeah. like 40 meters out and then he misses with the second goal which is rough. But a lot of the Tigers fans were saying they were they were robbed like it was soft and it was pretty soft to be fair like it didn't affect Fogarty at all but I he'd think, already kicked it I yeah. guess is their point the only thing is it's, it's just a rule it's it's similar to the obstruction with the Warriors like it's yeah. kind of it's a rule it's a it's an iffy rule but it is a rule well you you take that rule away and you've got guys diving at Nathan Cleary's knees yeah. you know you've got guys diving at Sean Johnson's knees yeah. so that definitely needs to be in there well, one last point on this one I, I quite liked Um, Fogarty I thought had an excellent game aside from icing the game with that penalty the drop goal attempt two of his tries he scored two tries and they both came off grubbers that hit the post as he was like gliding along and you see dudes try this all the time but it's not often that you see it happen twice gliding across the field grubber it straight into the post and then he's the first person there to pick it up it's a brilliant tactic it's great yeah it was it was pretty unlucky to be fair as well to concede two tries like that in a game the Tigers yeah, yeah. They're, they're just like well, what, what do we do now how do you defend against that design a drill to stop uh, to defend against the, the post kick I think it's only positives for the Warriors though. if you take on the Raiders you see how how like breakable they are yeah. um, Joe Tuppen he's playing great again he's doing so much work in the middle there yes. Corey Horsburgh the old the yeah. crying ginger he's um, <laughs> he, he's been awesome Like he might even be looking at an origin call up as yeah. well um, but yeah hopefully the Warriors can shut down the Raiders and just ruin the celebrations and yeah. call Rookie a Muppet I can see it happening alright that'll do us for the stonker of the round just quickly huge congrats to Sonny Meta who won the first Mad Traveller prize hope you enjoyed your $500 cash prize had a great game a uh, great time down at the game in Napes hopefully you stayed off the pitch uh, we're giving away one more Mad Traveller prize pack to head to Hamilton August August 12th to see the Warriors take on the lowly West Tigers with flights and accommodation for you and a mate plus $500 spending money and a signed Warriors jersey signed by none other than Marcelo Montoya, one of Joel's top 10 mates in New Zealand. If you want to win that, just keep an eye on the ACC socials for your next chance to enter. Not guilty, Your Honour. Yeah, what are you getting the ref's room number, mate? Let's get on to the talking points of the round. And we've got to start with the biggest talking point of the week. Nathan Cleary has done his hammy. He will be out for State of Origin 2. He's going to be out for six weeks. Uh, Joel Harrison, in your mind, who comes in to replace him in State of Origin 2? It seems like there has never been a debate. There's never been like a selection debate like this ever in Origin. Uh, I was watching NRL 360. The whole panel has no idea what's going to happen. Where's Paul Kent gone? Yeah, I was actually thinking that. What yeah, he I seemed, I haven't seen him for a while. I thought he'd have a lot to say on it. He seemed like, yeah, seemed like an interesting guy. I've, um, I've been, I want to hear his takes on the whole Dylan Brown situation, but I digress. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah, Dylan Brown, He look, he could have been up for New South Wales selection. I'm sure he had some Sydney granddad yeah, somewhere down the line. but would have figured it out. Probably shouldn't talk about him for legal reasons. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a, like people were saying Hines... Should he even be there? He was the best player in the NRL last year. Yeah. Should he even be there? The Sharks, they had a bit of a fall to the end of the season. Mm. They've been average this year. They have. Like they 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 kind of look like a great team, but they haven't really delivered. Yeah. And he's leading them. It's like Luai, will he the only reason a lot of people had picked him is yeah. because of the combination with Cleary. Hundred percent. You got Adam Reynolds, people are saying bring him back in. He has he has been rock solid. Yeah. He's played big games before. And they they reckon bring back the whole Rabbitohs spine. Oh, I don't mind that. Latrell Mitchell, Cody Walker, Reynolds, and then move Cookie in at nine and yep. get Uppy Coruscant fourteen. Although he played incredibly in the last game, yep. but the grand final spine. People even talking about Mitch Moses, Luke Brooks, probably not. But um, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a stretch. If I'm going to throw it out there, I reckon they might go with Hines and Luai. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, okay, so I think who they should replace uh, Nathan Cleary with is Adam Reynolds. Yeah. And I think if you disagree with me, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, you're and a here's muffin. why. Because what they really need to do is bring 
Nico Hines in. Nico Hines, I still think, is the best player. He's a big game player. He hasn't been in that situation before. Like, he hasn't been on those big stages. So that's why you need a cool hand like an Adam Reynolds. That's why you bring Reynolds in at seven, you bring Hines in at six. They're essentially dual playmakers. Um, and I think, because if you're going to bring Hines in, uh, Hines and Luai, to me, doesn't really f- strike fear into the heart of yeah. Queensland, if you know what I mean. Adam Reynolds, he's... Been in every big game situation, been in every pressure game cooker. He's a he's a game manager. He can set Nico Hines a little bit freer to play more of that sort of Melbourne fullback role that he played for a wee while there. Um, I think that is the best way forward for me. I don't I don't even think Luai should have been in that um second that first game. Yeah. I just think he's such a grub <laughs> and he doesn't I don't know. New South Wales already have a problem with everyone hating them. They don't need him in there. Nothing irks me more than when you see someone from the pen with the Panthers score a try and then Lua just jumps, puts like his, his nuts up all yeah. the way on his shoulder, jumps yeah. unnecessarily high. That's, that gets my gut. Whenever somebody, one of the big forwards, smashes another big forward, Luai's like clapping in his face. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 who was it? Was it when Tedesco was knocked out or something? He grabbed someone who was knocked out by the, by the shirt <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was... Oh yeah, I do remember that. that was, so it's yeah. just that that kind of stuff when and and you know they let the boys play in State of Origin, which was the other thing about it. it was so refreshing just to let the yeah watch the boys just go for it. Yeah, last yeah, yeah. week. Um, why can't we bring a bit more of that back to back bring to, back the biff? Yeah, bring back the biff for sure, and just letting the boys play on. There was, I mean, I think in that first half, about it would have been about seven sin bins dished mm. out. Um, Four HIAs they missed. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, and um. I don't know, something about Luai in there just doesn't, it just sort of brings it down a little bit for me. Like, here's guys going out there playing hard, then you got this green goblin just in everyone's face laughing at them. So, look, I, I digress. Um, yeah, so for me, Cleary out. For Origin 2, it's got to be Reynolds and Hines uh, for me. And if you disagree, you're a fucking idiot. Sorry, Joel. There was one very funny thing I heard on Origin. Also, it wasn't funny. It was pretty legit. It was yeah. Billy Slater talking, and he's... Oh, would he know? They were kind of like, oh, Nathan Cleary's out. Like, is this in the bag have you guys secured origin and he's like mate we've lost Tom Gilbert and Jai Arrow those two people uh, as a team as important as Nathan Cleary himself yeah and I was like look they're two great players but sure. are they as important as one of the best walking players on earth yeah because I tell you what in my super coach team I'm not like god how do I get Jai Arrow back in when he comes <laughs> yeah. back from his syndesmosis injury now um, alright moving on to the second talking point point. Um, and look we, you know we are pressed for time here so we've only got to we can only get to the three most important talking points in the National Rugby League um, and the second most important behind Nathan Cleary out for Origin 2 is Joel and Marcelo Montoya's top 10 friends in New Zealand we're looking top 10 friends excluding the whole Warriors playing squad. Yes. Now this came from a conversation that I overheard you having with his wife, who you work with. I was just saying, look, we look uh, Taylor and I. We work together now on the same show. We're, um, we're good close personal friends. Marcel and I, good close personal friends. Oh, yeah? Kind of. Um, <laughs> we met once at the Christmas party. I got a photo. That I reckon that constitutes being mates. Yeah. And, and you asked her. You said surely I would be Marcelo Montoya's top ten mates in New Zealand, excluding Warriors players. Yeah, and she said. Look, we don't know many people in New Zealand, so you're probably you're probably somewhere at maybe ninth, oh. maybe ninth. Oh no! I was like, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. There was That's... talks of when she came to when she first arrived in New Zealand. I was like, look, we should go out for dinner with my partner Grace yep. and uh, Marcel and you. Maybe like I can introduce you to some of my friends. You can come around to my flat, have a few beers, <laughs> uh, play, watch the Mount of It Mad Dogs under ninety kg rugby league team <laughs> play. You know, whatever you want. So I reckon, yeah, we're pretty good friends. All right, brilliant. So well, lock it in. <laughs> I, I look to um, I'm looking to knock you off that perch. Actually, I'm trying. Yeah. To, I want to knock you out of uh, top ten contention. Just haven't had the chance. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. Maybe at the next uh, work function, if it's bring a partner, we can. Yeah. We can. Uh, we can pester him there. Maybe I won't ask for a photo this time. I'll play it cool. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Um, the final talking point for the podcast today. Braith and Nesta, it has come out, has received what they are calling a lucrative offer to be on the Bachelor. Um, now I feel like he wears so many different hats. He was Cam Munster. Well, he is Cam Munster's yeah. agent. Which seems like a breach of, um, you know, a conflict of interest because he also hosts NRL 360. Yeah. He'll host the game day stuff. They'll have him down on the sideline from time to time. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, they want him to be the bachelor. I think he'd be a great bachelor. Yeah, he's got a Beautiful great dude. a great set of hair, a great hair on him. Yeah. yeah. I would, um, if I was, yeah, I'll probably stay out of it. So yeah, can you can just wipe the drool off the desk there, mate. Jesus. Um, I wanted to know who from the Warriors should be on there. And I'm, I'm going to go with... Um, 
old school Warriors as well. They don't have to currently be playing. Yep, yep. So anyone anyone from the Warriors set up um, for, for your money, Joel Harrison, who would you like to see in there? I really think that Luke Metcalf, he's a, oh. he's a dashing guy. The only thing is he looks 12. Yes. Um, he, seriously, some of the photos, especially that Heritage jersey one that they're rolling out with oh, them, yeah. I was like, it looks like you've brought your younger cousin to come and train with you. <laughs> I look, I don't look horrendously old myself as well, besides my receding hairline, but yep. like, he, um, <laughs> he, yeah, he, he's a, he's a, he's a little cutie, Eric, and Luke Metcalf. Okay. Well, yeah. maybe Josh Curran, just because of his, his, his thrilling, his riveting mullet. Yeah, I don't mind that. Um, I'm, I don't know, I don't know about Luke Metcalf. I feel like he's too young. I feel like you need someone who's, you know, accomplished in their career. I'm thinking Art Green, I'm thinking, I'm thinking promo shots, video shoots. What does the ad look like when it comes out? And so for me, it's Tamari Martin. Ooh, when you talk true. about when you talk about uh, billboard ready, you could put his face on a on a five hundred foot billboard downtown, whatever city in the country in Australia as well. He is going to look beautiful. I know he's an outdoorsman. If you go to his Instagram, um, you'll fall in love. But he's out there. <laughs> he's out there skinning pigs on the back of horses and things like that. You know, you can just you know that intro montage with. They introduced the bachelor. Here he is riding his horse down the beach. Yep. Now here he is getting stuck into some hunting and fishing. He's an everyday Kiwi bloke. You know, everyone can get behind him. So it's a mighty mountain for me. What if you could do like a package deal? So two people who look similar. I'll, I'll give you two options here. You could either go for 2022 Chanel Harris Savita and Reese Walsh. You, you could hardly tell apart in the field. Yeah. Two very good looking guys. I imagine getting women isn't hard for them. <laughs> or how about Jazz Tavanga and Dylan Walker Dylan with Walker. shaved heads? <laughs> who are you? Who, who are you choosing for the bachelor oh, for those two? I like it. Wait, so I've got to pick one of each, or oh, I'm, you could, yeah, what, what, gonna... what category or what, what sorry duo would you pick? Because there was that confusing season of the Bachelorette where they had two Bachelorettes. Didn't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. What if, what if we started the season with Chanel Harris Tavita and Reese Walsh, and then halfway through the season, or about sixty minutes into it, they um. They came off the bench, Dylan Walker and yeah. Jess Tavanga came off the bench. They do a lot of good work through the middle on the bench as well. It's a surprise. These two are coming on and you've now got to pick from these two. All right, I think we've solved it. The next <laughs> season uh, will feature actually four bachelors and they'll yeah. all be from the Warriors. Thank you very much for joining us for today's uh, Mad Monday podcast. Don't forget that the Super Coach podcast will be out, I believe, tomorrow, if not later on today. So check that one out as well. Thank you very much for joining me, Joel. Good to be here. And uh, up the wires, we'll see you on Friday night, 8 p.m. on Sky Sport, whatever. Check the ACC social media for what channel that is. Go the Warriors or Up, up the, the Warriors? Warriors!